Some words that might start popping up when you are trying to understand what a hot observable is might include multicasting, subject, replay subject, share, share replay. You might not know what the heck it is, but there seems to be some important difference between a hot observable and a cold observable that is going to screw you over at some point. Hot observables seem like they employ some kind of wizardry, but by the end of this video you'll find hot observables a lot simpler and perhaps even a little disappointingly boring. So let's start this story from where it begins, outside of RxJS land specifically, and just with the general observer pattern as defined by that book that always seems to come up. This is how the Gang of Four Design Patterns book describes the observer pattern. So paraphrased into code, a simple implementation of this pattern might look something like this. It's simple, much simpler than the actual RxJS implementation and missing some important features, but it will help get the important points across. So spoiler alert, what we are looking at right now is basically what an RxJS subject is, or in other words, a hot observable. So before we dive into what is going on here, it's important to understand the general difference between an observable and an observer. An observable is the mechanism that notifies observers of new values. An observer is an object we pass to the observable that defines how we want to react to the values that are produced. An observer would implement a next method or update as it is called in the design patterns diagram and the observable would call that method of the observer when it needs to notify it of a new value. So in this case, an instance of this simple subject class is the observable, and the observer is what we pass in when we subscribe to this observable by calling it subscribe method. Now you might notice something curious here. This subject, which is an observable, seems to implement the same methods our observer does. So in this simplified case, that is just a next method. But if we were dealing with RxJS here, both the observer and subject would also implement complete and error methods as well. So that is one of the special things about a subject as opposed to a more standard observable. It is both an observable and an observer. And this brings us to one of the key distinctions between a cold observable and a hot observable. With a hot observable like this subject, the values are produced outside of the observable itself. We create an instance of our subject like this, then we can produce values however and wherever we want in our code, and then we pass that value to the subject by calling its next method. The subject will then loop through every observer that is subscribed to it and pass that value along by calling their next methods. So new subscribers are added by calling the subscribe method on the subject and passing in an observer. And a more realistic example would also have a way to unsubscribe. So this subject is an observer because it needs to define how it wants to react to values being produced. In this case, these values are going to be generated from outside of the subject and passed to it using its next method, just like how observers who have subscribed to this subject have their next method called. But it is also an observable as well as an observer because the way in which it reacts to these produced values is to notify all of the observers that are subscribed to it. So it can be notified of values, but it also notifies others of values. So it's an observable and it's an observer. So that's the other key part of a hot observable. It shares the values produced with all subscribers. One instance of this subject can notify many subscribers of a value that was produced. So the two key parts to a hot observable that I have mentioned are that its values are produced from outside of the observable itself and it shares any new values that are produced with all of its subscribers. Now let's compare with a more standard or cold observable. Again, this is just a simple implementation that is missing a lot of the guarantees that an RxJS observable provides, like proper implementations of complete and error. But again, we're just trying to keep things simple here. So notice that this observable just has the subscribe method. It has no next method or anything like that to be called, so where are the values actually generated? So I mentioned before that a hot observable generates values from outside of the observable itself. A cold observable generates values from within the observable itself. So when we create a new observable using this simple observable, 
we pass it a function. So this function accepts an observer and this function is able to do whatever it likes to produce values and then call the observer's next method to pass it whatever data it wants whenever it is ready. So if we take a look at the implementation for simple observable here, we can see that we take that function that is supplied when the new simple observable is created and we store it as a private class member called function to run on subscribe. Then when something subscribes to this observable, it will supply the observer it wants to use. And then we call that function that we set up when the observable was created and we pass it the observer that just subscribed. So now our function will be executed, that function will do its thing and hopefully pass a value to the observer that we just passed to it. This means that every time something subscribes to this observable, it is going to re-execute the function we set it up with. So if we have 10 subscribers, the logic for producing the values runs 10 times. So this is not the case with the subject. If we have 10 subscribers, the logic to produce the value is only executed once and the result is shared with all 10 subscribers. So quick recap, a hot observable produces values from outside of the observable and can share produced values with multiple subscribers. A cold observable produces values from inside of the observable and re-executes the logic for producing values for each new subscriber. Now let's get this back into RxJS land to give a bit more context. So we could create a new cold observable like this and a new hot observable like this. So this is basically the same idea as using the simplified versions we just looked at. There is just a bit more going on behind the scenes with RxJS. And what about all those other fancy words I mentioned before? Multicasting, share, share replay, replay subject. Well, let's have a quick lightning round for definitions here. Multicasting is just a fancy way of saying hot observable. One observable can share values with many observers. A replay subject is also just a hot observable like a normal subject. The problem with a subject or a hot observable is that since the values are produced outside of the observable, the logic to produce the values is not re-executed for each new subscriber, you might miss values. So a subject might share a new value with its nine current subscribers, but if a new subscriber comes along a few seconds too late, it will never receive that value that just went out. So a replay subject allows you to replay old values that have already been delivered so that the new subscriber doesn't miss out. Share is an operator that will turn your cold observable into a hot observable. Essentially, it will create a new subject or hot observable that subscribes to the original cold observable. And now multiple subscribers can subscribe to this subject to share values. And share replay is an operator that does basically the same thing as share but with a replay subject instead to repeat old values to late subscribers. So as always, there is still some nuance here and things to watch out for. Uh, for example, if you use the share operator and the subscriber count to the shared observable drops to zero, when a new subscriber comes along, it is going to resubscribe to the original source observable, which is a cold observable. And so it will trigger the logic in the source observable for a second or maybe third or fourth time whereas you might expect it to only ever be triggered once if you're using the share operator. But hopefully now you at least have the general idea of what all of this stuff means and you can spend a little extra time reading up on the specific things you are using. All right, that's it for today. Uh, if this video was delivered hot, on time and to your satisfaction, please consider leaving a like and increasing my subscriber count before you go. And I hope to see you again for the next video.